Okay, so before the late 80s and 90s, gay, lesbian, and transgender representation was mostly based on stereotypes. The gays were mostly sissies, the lesbians were dangerous creatures, witches, and vampires. Transgender people, forget about them, they were serial killers. Things started to change in uh, the 60s and 70s for a few reasons. One of them was the rise in popularity of television that prompted film producers to attract passionate niche audiences to film theatres. In 1961, um, a British neo-noir titled Victim, starring Dirk Bogard, was one of the first films to legitimately humanise homosexuality and the first English language film to actually use that word, homosexuality, at a time when homosexuality in the country was illegal. In America, in 1968, a film like Midnight Cowboy came as close to portraying a homosexual relationship without actually explicitly referring to it as such. New queer cinema, too, was prompted by technological advancements, particularly the proliferation of small video formats at the turn of the 90s. But the movement dubbed New Queer Cinema by critic B. Ruby Rich also came out of a period marked by the AIDS pandemic, which attracted universal mainstream compassion for the community. At first, this movement about legitimate representation for the LGBTQ plus community was pure, meaning that the films of this movement were directed by gay directors and often starred gay actors. They were mostly consumed by gay audiences as well. For example, Gus Van Sant and the godfather of the movement, Derek Jarman, emerged from this movement. But as their popularity grew, Hollywood started to become interested and several titles from the mid-90s are considered part of new queer cinema, including Boys Don't Cry from 1999, featuring an Oscar-winning performance by the heterosexual Hilary Swank, and Chasing Amy from 1997, directed by Generation X comedy auteur Kevin Smith, often defined as a lesbian movie, but to me actually exploring bisexuality in a surprisingly mature and sometimes hilarious way. While this peak in interest uh, from straight film artists is viewed by some as problematic, a film like Happy Together by Wong Kar Wai from 1997 clearly shows that, as B. Ruby Rich states, and I am paraphrasing, the quality of the movie comes down to genius rather than sexual identity. The reason why I agree with that is, for years, straight filmmakers treated gay, lesbian and transgender characters as stereotypes. And while to this day stereotypes persist, there's no doubt about the giant leaps that have been made since the days of the sissies, the dykes and the cross-dressing serial killers. In 2005, large mixed audiences around the world gathered in cinemas to watch two A-listers share a passionate, animalistic, gay sex scene in Brokeback Mountain, which marked another huge turning point. And in 2017, a fantastic girl starring a transgender actress went on to win the best foreign language film at the Academy Awards, and this would simply have been unthinkable up to a few years ago. Let me make this clear. I may be an art lover and self-professed art connoisseur, which is debatable, but I don't particularly believe that there is such a thing as good art and bad art, just as long as it isn't solely motivated by financial gains and as long as you can't see right through them. For years, there have been concerns about the future of cinema and calls for an impending death of cinema. These concerns are silly. A cinema is actually quite a young art form, a little over a century old, really. So when I think about the future of cinema, I don't only think of technological advancements, I also think of an increased representation of all people, regardless of gender, sexuality, nationality, or ethnicity. Lastly, if you'd like to know more about the history of the LGBTQ plus community and cinema, I urge you to check out Vito Russo's 1981 book, The Celluloid Closet, and the 1995 documentary of the same name based on that book. But for now, you're listening to The Art Movement, and let me introduce you to a dear friend of mine. How'd you do? Uh